Hello and welcome to Casual Magic. Today I want to briefly tell you about the results of our work draft tournament that we did last week. Absolutely love it. Uh, one of the great things that uh, my company has done now, uh, this is the second time, is we have a draft event at uh, a local game store and pay for employees entrance fees. So we had 18 people sign up paid for all the employees, entry fees are basically ten dollars each and that's company paid for out of basically an activities fee that you would spend on other things like sports tickets and, and so on. So in essence we got paid to play magic. If you ever have the ability to have your company do that I highly recommend it. It's so much fun. <laughs> um, for uh, my event uh, as you can see, in the end, I just ended up going pretty much mono red because it, uh, yeah, it was just easiest. And most people were playing uh, red and green and and some white, and yeah, it just just red was was very fun. Really, out of the uh, the whole group, the one card that I drew that pretty much made me say, "Okay, I'm definitely definitely doing red." Sin Prodder. It's one of my favorite cards out of the Shadows Over Innistrad set. It's got Menace, which is nice, so it has to be blocked by two creatures or more, so if your opponent only has one, you can keep pounding away at this. But the extra nice thing, at the beginning of your upkeep, reveal top card of your library. Any opponent may have you put that card in your graveyard. If a player does, Sin Prod, or <laughs> if I can say that right, Sin Prod or deals damage to that player equal to that card's converted mana cost. Otherwise, put that card into your hand. So, this basically is a draw engine. So at the beginning of your upkeep, you might have something like... Let's see. Uh, Gatstaff Arsonist. Its converted man cost is 5. So this comes up at the top of your library. Your opponent has to decide. Do you want them to have that card, or do they want to take 5 damage and have it go to your graveyard? And they basically have to make that decision. Sometimes, yeah, a mountain pops up. They just basically say graveyard. It goes into your graveyard and does zero points of damage. But other times you get cards like this, they actually have to make that decision. Are they going to take damage or are they going to let you get an extra card? So really, Sin Prodder was very, very useful to just basically be a draw engine. So I could just keep getting, you know, two cards almost every single turn as long as I had them out. Especially if I could get them out on turn three. I could just basically draw and with some other cards discard as much as I wanted and just rifle through my deck. It was great. Mad Prophet, mainly for discard a card, draw a card. Ember Eye Wolf, nice thing, uh, being able to pump him up and uh, destroy something that's uh, tougher on the other side. And in uh, one epic battle, uh, my opponent's Ember Eye Wolf was getting out of control and our, uh, our two wolves ended up killing each other, so that was fun. Uh, basically a tiny werewolf, small blocker, pyrehound. You can bump up pyrehound little by little during the game, but uh, I never really got to use him that much. Um, basically a one drop, a big butt, incorrigible use. Nice thing about it, I was able to discard pretty much whenever I wanted to, so I got this out for its madness cost every time. So to get out a 4-3 with haste for 3, great, love it, excellent card. Breakneck Rider, uh, when it flips, your creatures get um, plus one, plus zero, oh, and trample. Uh, definitely good. Um, more often than not, when I threw this out, um, and ended up being targeted and killed. As far as instants go, love Inner Struggle. Target creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. There's one time I couldn't use this, and that's when a creature was uh, four or five. So unfortunately it can't kill itself unless I'm able to somehow bump it up and then have it kill itself. But more often than not, I could just basically say, okay, your creature commits suicide. And one person I played against, it was great. They actually had the creature, spent mana to make it go from a 6-6 six, six up to something even bigger uh, by enchanting it. And then before they declared uh, attackers, I just basically threw this out there. It was just like, hi, you're creature kills itself and it's just like oh okay and made him waste a turn so fun 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 card dual shot it's just basically there to uh, take out little weenie tokens dance with devils um, I mainly had this for defensive purposes that way 
I can just kind of uh, throw this out and be able to do four points of damage um, on the scene just with an instant. Fiery Temper, again I was able to get Madness um, almost whenever I wanted to so I was able to get this out for one more often than not and basically use it as a lightning bolt so definitely useful. Tormenting Voice had a couple of those. You discard a card and then you draw two cards. So it helps enable madness, it helps get you extra cards. Definitely, definitely useful. Magmatic Chasm. I had three of these. Creatures without flying can't block this turn. Love it. Um, more often than not, your creatures uh, are going to get through on this. And if your opponent has flyers, unless you have a bunch of flyers, which spoiler alert, I'm playing red in this set where there are some angels, which I had none. So if I'm playing against someone else who has flyers, they're attacking almost all the time. So as a result, I could throw this out and okay, I can just, you know, swing all my creatures through and yeah, they've got their flyer and they can swing through and hit me for four, but then I can just throw out another one of these and attack and maybe get through for another six and just try and race my way to the win. So this is a very, very fun card. Uh, reduced to Ashes, mainly just to have a spell to do five points of damage. Uh, explosive Apparatus, just a way to be able to uh, have an extra object out there um, to do two damage to target creature or player. Neglected Heirloom. Uh, it's definitely good when you have uh, werewolves because this one, whenever a creature transforms, then it becomes a uh, tougher weapon. I think it's a plus three, plus three. Skin Invasion. Absolutely fun. If your opponent has something completely wimpy, you spend one, you enchant it, it has to attack you, you kill it, and then you get a four, three creature for one. Awesome, 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 awesome card. Uh, honestly, irregardless of however the price goes, up or down with this set, just get a play set of these. Just get four. It's uncommon. They shouldn't be that expensive. Long term in the game of Magic, this is something that can be used probably in modern forever. So if it's cheap, I highly recommend getting this card because this is one of the most great ones out of the set. And then the rest are Mountains. Red Devil, Steam and Matted Blue. <coughs> so, how was it? Well, I'll say it was very fun. Um, I'll just flip through some of my other cards that I drafted but didn't use. I used Duskwalk Recruiter a lot in Japan. That was a great card, but I just uh, ended up getting it too late. I thought I could do Red and White. Early on, this is something I just picked kind of close to the end when it was a third pack. I knew I was going mono red, and then this thing came up in like the fourth pack, and there was really nothing else. No red in there for me. I was like, all right, fine, I'll just take a rare. Got this early on, thought I could use it, thought I could use it. Great, great way to lock down. Um, great removal spell. Got this early on, hoping I could get it, and then just basically had no tokens, no flyers. Got land where I thought I could get through. Uh, Stenzia Masquerade, I mean, it's nice for first strike, but didn't really use it. <clears throat> Structural Distortion, I did have this used against me in one game, and that was kind of harsh because it was one where I had mulliganed. I think I went down to six, and I didn't want to go down again, and I had two lands, and I just thought, okay, I've got low enough cost creatures, I can run with this, and then I'll just draw into whatever, and it doesn't really matter, because eventually I'm going to be drawing a ton of cards anyway, except for the fact that I could never draw a third land, and I got partway through the game, and then on turn four, my opponent plays Structural Distortion and destroys one of my lands, so then I have one land which wasn't the end of the world, I could still throw out the 1-1 Vampire, but yeah, this is a very good card if your opponent only has two lands. Vessel Volatility, I just didn't really need ramp necessarily that much, and Senseless Rage, it's alright, but didn't get a chance to use it. So, in the end, I got uh, 11th place, so 
slightly bottom half. Um, wish I could have done better, but uh, the first one I went up against, uh, it, it was competitive, but I lost both games because he just had flyers, and I don't really have much um, to go against flyers other than direct damage. And he could either still get them out or he could bump them up. That way at least they'd survive the turn. And in the end, he just outlasted me. And the uh, second game, it was competitive. And in the end, on the last game, because it went one and one, last game I raced him down to a decent amount. And in the end, uh, basically this was my hand. Three magmatic chasms and a dual shot. And he, little by little, had blown away my creatures or killed them and eventually had all of his uh, werewolves transform and were super tough and went through and I had to sacrifice my few remaining creatures just to stay alive for one turn. And in the end, you know, it's like, oh, what am I drawing? Oh, another masma or magmatic chasm. So, in the end, I lost that one too. And then the last one, we had someone drop, and somehow I ended up getting the buy. Wish I could have played more. Would have been fun, but, you know, at least I've got some cards to show for it. My one prize pack, yeah, It's all right. Yeah, another dead weight. That's good. Uh, let's see. Behind the scenes, Gloom Widow, which I keep racking up a ton of. Near Heath Chaplin, he's decent. And, aw, ever after. The zombie couple. <laughs> this thing's cool. Um, four of anything and two black. Return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Each of those creatures is a black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. Put ever after on the bottom of its owner's library. So you get two creatures, however big. Throw them out onto the field. And this goes to the bottom of your library, where if you're playing black, you'll probably just tutor it out anyway and recast it and get back even more stuff. Super, super fun. And I am i know this isn't a valuable card, but I'm definitely looking forward to using it in my zombie deck. And again, just to taunt me, a uh, Duskwatch Recruiter. Get a clue. <clears throat> and the other nice thing the uh, card shop did, they threw in the, uh, the game day promo. They just had a bunch left over, I guess, and they just said, oh, okay, here, we'll, you know, give this to all of your uh, players as well. That was nice. And then because we had enough money in our budget, we got prizes for everyone, so some people got deck boxes and sleeves and play mats. One of the play mats I loved was the Super Mario one. Never seen that before. It seemed really cool. Sadly, I didn't get it. But the one I did get was absolutely hilarious. I'm still not sure what I'm going to do with it. I probably won't use it, but it's hilarious. I got Nyan Cat. So that's uh, the quick summary. Um, I didn't necessarily do the best, but I had an absolute blast. It was very competitive. It was very fun. And it was paid for. I can, I can put this down there too. All of this, zero. All of this paid for by um, company activity money. So if you have the opportunity to try and have an activities committee at your work um, do magic, then absolutely. I highly, highly encourage it. I mean, yeah, it's not your local game store community, but at least it's your work community. And it is absolutely worth it, so I highly encourage it. And if you do play, um, I can only hope that you do better than I did this time, because this time was a little bit worse than the previous draft. We'll see how it goes again in another six months when we have our next event. So, until next time, good luck! <laughs>